hopefully everybody can uh, see my screen. Yeah, I can see. Awesome. So uh, firstly, uh, Dr. Mendoza, we thank you so much uh, for the opportunity uh, to uh, come and uh, speak to your class. Uh, the opportunity to share is uh, much appreciated. And hopefully we can uh, add to the discourse here. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, our title uh, for our time together, uh, the, for the importance of community archives uh, and our individual roles. Uh, so we hope to take this time to flesh out the importance of community archives. Uh, and I will do that by way of illustrating, I'll illustrate it by way of our organization, okay? So uh, let's uh, get into a little bit of background here on, on, on how this will play out. So we'll cover uh, background, we'll cover some key terms, why, uh, how, and then we will open it up for some questions. So when we talk about background, we'll, we'll cover who we are, what we do, and, and where we do it, all right? So who are we? So we, the San Antonio African American Community Archives and Museum have been around since about July, 2017. Uh, we were founded by local visionaries, uh, community advocate George Frederick, and architects, landscape architect, and historic preservationist Everett Fly. Uh, so that's when we started. Uh, SACAM is the way we shortened that. As you know, it's a pretty long name. Uh, so in an effort to make that easy for most people to say, to get it to roll off the tongue, we just say SACAM. All right. We are a board-guided, staff-led history advocacy organization. So we are made up of history professionals, history enthusiasts, event planners, strategic thinkers, educators, and other professionals, uh, and uh, community members uh, who come together, of course, for a common purpose. What do we do? Uh, so our task you know, our purpose is to collect, share, and preserve the history of African Americans in San Antonio and the surrounding area. So we started off primarily as a digital uh, museum, uh, but we are expanding into some physical stuff as well. Uh, some of you may have heard of us, maybe seen some information on us. Our starting footprint was at the Sutton Homestead. Uh, on North Cherry Street. So this is uh, on, on uh, San Antonio's east side, uh, just not too far from uh, Tower of the Americas, actually. Um, the Suttons are an African-American family uh, that date back to 1896 here in the city. Uh, they were a family of educators, business people, and other uh, professionals. Uh, Twelve of the Sutton children all graduated from college. Uh, African-American families graduated from college and went on to do very well uh, across the nation. We recently opened a space in La Vida, as uh, Dr. Mendoza mentioned, uh, where we showcase uh, in a bit more detail the accomplishments of African-Americans here in the city. And we try and do that, of course, in physical form. Uh, we, let, we moved our everything that we had from the Sutton Homestead in August of 2020. So we were sort of without a exhibit space for a period of time, but have now reopened what we know today as what we're calling today, SACAM at La Vieta. Uh, so when we, when we look at that physical space, we see a, a, a place where you can actually come to what we do. Prior to that, all you could do is our virtual experience through our website, which is sacam.org, uh, where we do, we do a lot of programming through Zoom, uh, things like that, just to, to help uh, people understand that we were still around even when we didn't have our physical space uh, and to be able to interact with people. So why all of that background? Uh, Organization and collaboration are very important to this kind of an under, undertaking. 
you're going to start a community archives, you're going to have to have the ability to organize and also to collaborate. Uh, and it's also important for you to understand the direction that you're intending to go with your archives. Okay, why, why are you collecting this stuff in the first place? It's important to know those things uh, as you set out on this journey. Uh, I'm reminded of a saying that I've heard many times over the years, and that's uh, plan your work, then work your plan. So now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's move on to some basic concepts so we can deep dive into why community archives are important uh, in a bit more detail. So we're gonna talk about a few terms. We're gonna talk about archives, community archives, folklore, history, and archives. So archives, what are archives? So let me, let me start with you all. What are archives? Anybody wanna chime in? Um, like documentation of anything that could, would want to be remembered. Other answers? Just records from history. Okay, good, good, good. Awesome. Yes, yes. So archives are permanently valuable records. Okay, letters, reports, accounts minute books, drafts, recordings, final manuscripts, photographs, videos of, of people, of businesses, of government, of organizations. These are all archives. These are records that are kept because they have a continuing value uh, to the creating organization and or any future users. They are the documentary, the documentary evidence of past events and places. They are the facts we use to interpret and understand history. So if you think about any historical documentary you've ever watched or any program you've ever watched, those programs and doc documentaries are built on archives. So now, community archives. So uh, the, the parent organization of uh, archivists is the uh, Society of American Archivists, okay? And they define community archives as documentation of a group of people that share common interests and social, cultural, and historical heritage. And they are usually created by members of that group and the, the the other unique thing about them is they're generally outside of your traditional archives. When you think about traditional archives, you're thinking about something in a university or historical society or something like that. Community archives tend to be separate from all of that. Okay. So we at SACAM are a community driven resource designed to help communi the community safeguard and represent its own history and ensure access to the public. It intends to provide an additional insight into historical events and places from other perspectives. So when you go out and you do your own research on community archives, you will find that there are a lot of different models uh, behind how these are set up. Uh, this is the model that we have chosen uh, which I'll begin to flesh out as I continue. Um, there are many different types. We're just one. So I don't want you to walk, come away with this from this thinking that this is the only way to do it because it's not. But this is the framework that we've chosen. Is everybody following me so far? Yes, I'm excited. Thank you. Yes, great, sir. Great. Yes, awesome. sir. Awesome, awesome. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next term, folklore, history, and archives. So, what is, does anybody know what, folk, what folklore is? is? Would that fall within the realm of mythology and fictional tales told by our descendants, not descendants, ancestors? 
Okay. Okay. Yes. That's uh, that that that's that's it on the money. Thank you. Uh, it is. They they are the stories we hear. Okay, the stories we hear. So I want you to also think about uh, how many of you remember the paper cup game. You all ever played the paper cup game before? So those of us who are a little bit further along in years uh, used to take paper cups with a string in the middle of them, and we would we would talk we would talk through the no we, we would talk through them okay uh, to, as a means of communicating. Another piece of that or another form of that game would be to, to tell a story to someone in their ear and have them pass it along to the next person to see how accurate then that story is in the long term. What you sometimes find is that the story is, is even in the same moment from where it started to where it ends. Has anybody ever experienced that before? Yes. Okay. okay. So imagine if years have passed and you are asking someone to recount a story. Very often, you can think about maybe even in your own life where you've been asked to remember something and you probably got 80% of it correct, but there are a few details that are a little bit fuzzy, right? So this is, this is the challenge we face as we think about archives, especially in terms of oral histories and how we capture and document that. So archives are supported by primary source material, okay? This is, like I told you before, this is a letter. Uh, it, is, it is something written, tangible, a photograph. These are things that we consider archives. Opinions can change, but archives stand the test of time. They are the evidence that we are here, that we were here. Perspectives are important. Perspectives are very important, but they become even more powerful when they are supported by physical evidence. Is everyone still with me? So now that we have a, a better understanding of some of the concepts, let's talk about why community archives is so important. Why, why, why? So we wanna talk about vantage point, we wanna talk about ownership, and we wanna talk about education. Communities themselves have a unique vantage point, a way that they see things. It is one thing to read about a thing or to watch a thing from the outside. It's another thing to know a thing and to live a thing. So we, 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 we have, so when we talk about level of understanding, uh, if we think about maybe even in our own family circles, uh, People can see what goes on with our family, with us, and they can take that and form a particular perspective or opinion. But unless they were in the middle of it, it's sometimes difficult for them to fully grasp it or understand it on a very deep level, okay? So, so vantage point becomes very important when it comes to archives particularly community archives. So we at SACAM realize that there's an opportunity to take ownership of and shed light on the history of African-Americans in San Antonio and the surrounding area. We, we want to engage in understanding our own stories. So, so that, becomes, that becomes crucial because, because then we, we are coming at the history from a place of knowing and living a thing, okay? We also wanna be a educational resource. We wanna be able to teach and help people better understand how African-Americans have contributed uh, to, to their own growth, but also to a larger society. 
So there's some other whys. So we've got pride, we've got understanding, and we've got community interpretation. Let's talk about pride and understanding. Isn't it exciting to watch a family member graduate from school, be it high school or college or trade program? Isn't it exciting? We, we jump for joy, we celebrate, we make noise, we clap sometimes too much, but we are excited. And so we have an opportunity as an archive to do that for people. To, to be able to provide them and show them things so that they might be, we might provide a source of pride for them, a source of encouragement. And, and also when it comes to understanding, a greater understanding of what's been accomplished in the past. You might know that something happened, but you might not know the background as to why it happened or what it really meant, what impact it, the full, what impact it fully made on on society or uh, and so that's why a community archives can be important because you are, you are able to create that for people you 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 have people who have done things and they're very humble about it and sometimes they don't realize the level of impact that they've made. But when they when they hear it recounted, they get a, a fresh appreciation for it. And then you're also able to show that to others. Community interpretation. We are uniquely a community archive. We facilitate the process of interpreting history at the community level, helping them to protect, to preserve, and share their history on their own terms. Okay. Providing the training to facilitate preservation is also something we look to do. We, we as history professionals, that are part of this organization. That's our task. And, and we're gonna talk about that where you're concerned here in a little bit. But we wanna, as a community archives, we wanna teach people how to do this. Most importantly, as history advocates, we wanna make sure that the history is preserved. It may not be with us. We would love for it to be with us and we know how to maintain it and all of those things, but there are gonna be some folks who perhaps would like to maintain that on their own. And that's totally fine. In that case, then we seek to try to help them do that because that's another part of what we do, okay? Uh, as a community archives, we take a level of care with our materials because they belong to us. If you think about your family photo albums, Nobody's going to treat your family photo albums like you do. Okay, so so this is something that community archives seek to do. There's there's a, a, a level of concern for this material that goes beyond uh, scholar scholarly understanding, if that makes sense. And then we also want to add to the historical record by providing additional perspectives on people, places, and events. We think about archives and we think about the photographs, we think about the recordings, the books, the paper, um, but there's also placemaking, all right? Where, where did we live? What did we, what institutions did we create? Uh, where were those places? Uh, that stuff is easily erased by progress, if you will, by uh, things being torn down, uh, maybe buildings falling into disrepair. Uh, but, it, but isn't it great to be able to look back and know and not to forget about what might have taken place in a particular area of square footage? How many memories do we each have, uh, perhaps, of our grandparents' house? 
and what that was like to visit. The smells, the conversation, the laughter, the joy, all those things. So we want to try and maintain that. And then sometimes it means correcting the historical record so far as we can, if necessary. Again, if we're talking about people who don't live and know, there may be some, there may be a level of understanding that gets missed. And so we want to do what we can to correct that whenever we can. Any questions so far? All right, no problem. There'll be time for many because uh, we are making great time. <laughs> All right. So if, if I didn't give you enough whys, let me give you a few more because there, the, the reasons I've shared with you are reasons why archives are important. They are a, mean, a means by which communities remember and document their heritage and pass that information on to future generations. Not just from a standpoint of what the heritage is, but also how to continue to collect it, how to preserve it and how to share it. So I'm, I'm, I don't just want to, I don't want you to watch me fish. I want to teach you how to fish, okay? That's how things get kept. That's how things get perpetuated. We know that there is an emancipation proclamation because somebody took the time to capture and keep it. If no one had done that, we wouldn't have that document. We wouldn't have any of the any any document that you hold dear if someone had not kept it. We wouldn't be able to do genealogical research if someone hadn't kept birth certificates and obituaries and the like. So archiving becomes very important. Okay? We, and, and it's important for us to realize that we are the guardians of our own legacy and the legacy of our community. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about how that can be done uh, before we close with uh, the questions, all right? So how? Seven ways and counting, and with your help, seven ways and counting. How does SACAM do this? By preserving materials by conducting research, including or including oral histories, by providing access, by conducting programs and training, by engaging the community, by leveraging available resources, uh, monetarily as well as knowledge, skills, and ability. Um, by expanding academic understanding, by helping professionals understand what, what the community archive brings to the overall discourse, the overall discussion about these concepts, okay? Professional thought. Ensuring the availability of these very unique records, okay? Um, and, and with an understanding that how we continue to do this evolves in terms of what we capture and how we capture it. So when the archival practice began, there was no social media. Everybody did not have a camera at their fingertips on their phone. Those things didn't exist. But yet and still, a archival information is being captured every day in that way. We don't realize it's archival, but it very much is. So that causes us to have to think outside the box a bit about what we actually have available to us and how that can all be brought together to communicate a community's history. We also try at SACAM 
to present the information we present in multiple forms. So we've established a digital presence, our website. That, pre that digital presence is expanding. Uh, if you go there, you'll see our web, but you'll also see our exhibits. There are exhibits there. Uh, we are also looking into some other ways to present this information so that it can be used. Um, so the online space is, is great for uh, millennials and digital natives, which I, I'm, I'm thinking most of you probably are. You probably don't remember a time when the internet didn't exist. Uh, when, when there wasn't a smartphone, uh, when you couldn't stream everything and you only had three television channels, you all probably don't even remember that. When cartoons came on only at a certain time of day. If, you, if that's you, you're a digital native. Uh, the volume of information uh, is available now on the internet uh, that, that we, we can capitalize on. The internet provides a farther reach. And I'm thinking that most of the folks on this call understand that, okay? It's, it's, it's all this grand information uh, from the comfort of your own living room. But there's a segment of the population uh, that has, has created the earlier versions of this history who don't necessarily have that level of access or care to engage in it for that matter. <laughs> And so we had, we, you have to establish a physical space if you can, a physical space for our seniors, okay? For our baby boomers and our greatest generation, our, our parents and grandparents, okay? We wanna have a physical space. And we also wanna have a, wanna be able to communicate this to our children in terms of child-friendly activity because they're not necessarily gonna have the skill set to get out on the computers. Now, I know that there are many, you know, kids today who have their own iPads and tablets that they're using and they know how to scroll and swipe in ways that our seniors don't. Uh, but there's, there's, there's something to be said for learners who learn by touch. So you have an opportunity to communicate that history in a way that people can then actually reach out and touch it. So in a community archive space, we want to be accessible to all ages as much as possible through some type of exhibit space as well as a digital space. Everybody still with me? All right. So, with your help is how we do this. With your Help. What about us as individuals? So we have, you know, you all are all college students with various majors. Some of you are uh, working on your first degree, perhaps others your second. We have to leverage what we have learned, okay? particularly for, for my history professionals that are on the call. We have to leverage what we've learned as history professionals to better our community in a very specialized way. We have a unique skill set that can be used in this way powerfully. So we want to make sure that in our communities we're contributing that. We think about as historians, uh, and I and I and I don't mean by any means to smudge our desires to write books to work at universities or any of those things. But in addition to that, consider how those skills might be employed in these more direct community ways. Um, and then we have to uh, open our eyes, as I alluded to earlier, to the ever expanding ways that history is collected. This is where our public historians come into play. I don't think public historians get enough airtime. You know, these are people who are pouring over the day-to-day -day of history, uh, over newspaper articles and rummaging through archives and talking to people. Uh, 
those, those, those are things that we can do as individuals. You know, nothing stops you from pulling your grandparents aside uh, and turning your, your uh, recorder app on your, your cell phone and getting that down. You don't need permission to do that. You can record it, you can type up a transcript and look, there's an archival document, okay? And then it's about knowing uh, and embracing our role because once we once you begin to internalize all of this, uh, then 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 you can start looking at how you can stay ahead. Because we know that our world is rapidly changing. Who would have thought that a room full of albums, music albums that is, uh, would now be on your cell phone? I could not have imagined it, but it's here. And so there this this these these large amounts of information are going to be whittled down to these very small devices, very small uh, areas of space and time. But we have to make sure that we know about these changes as they're coming so that we can use them to the benefit of our communities help our communities grow and expand and understand uh, the history. So that is my spiel. Any questions? Don't be bashful. Um, sir, I'm sorry. My name is Lisa Sosa, and I came into the conversation a little bit late. I'm not sure if you mentioned how long has SACAM been around. So, so we are pronounced SACAM. SACAM. Yep. Uh, we have been around since 2017, July 2017 or so. I do have a question with regard to the way that you collect the the content. Um, so do y'all have like a way that community members can go in and donate like their own personal footage or, or documents or how how did it initially begin to accumulate things like specifically within like San Antonio area and the surrounding areas? So it began primarily from two directions. One of them was an understanding of historic preservation in terms of place, as far as um, where slavery perhaps took place, like where the plantations were, the physical plantations, um, where, where communities of color were buried. So there was that, there was that discussion as far as where, where, where did we live, where did we exist? Was it just the east side? Was it other parts of the city? We found that it's been, it has been other parts of the city. Uh, so in addition to the east side, so, so it was that. And then it was also uh, from a place of oral history. So that tends to be a good opening because it is something that is very relatable to any and all of us. I mean, it is very easy, again, like I shared, to uh, pick up a cell phone or grab a notebook and a piece of paper and write down or begin to interview family member and capture things. Uh, so so the, that's, that's kind of how it began. Uh, our website allows you to record some information. We, if you, if, if you go to our website, you'll also see how you can get in touch with me and I can certainly uh, pass that along to, to folks. But I'll just do it now. It's, it's archivist, archivist at sacam.org. If you have things you want to donate, you send them our way. Now, our, our, our area of collection has to do with the African-American experience in the city. So any collections related to that, are things that, that we are interested in. Uh, if, if they're not of a person or community of color, they would relate to it in some way. Um, if, if you happen to have something that's outside of that scope, then I have the means to get you to the place you need to go to be able to put that where it, it's, it would be most beneficial to, the, to, that, to that particular community. So that's, 
that's basically how things got started. Are there others? You did mention about one of the ways, like how, and it was a community engagement. And which ways has have you guys been able to engage the community to get this information? So we have done uh, what is called a history harvest. It's where we say we're going to be at this place at this time. Feel free to bring along your photographs, your documents, your letters, uh, and, and allow us to help you digitize that information. Uh, and, 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 and let's let's consolidate all of this information in one place. And so we have a digital archive of that sort of material. Uh, we also have people that have come in for interviews. So from a research perspective, you know, as this is a research course, um, you you can take if if you if you got an oral history and you listen to that oral history, you now have a transcript that now has a that is essentially jam packed full of search terms, events, places, people that you can now go back and look for. You can find these places, find these people, uh, find these events, and and you can begin to build an understanding and, and better interpret that community based on what you've heard from the folks that you've interviewed. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Sure. Others. Okay, well, uh, again, it's been my pleasure. Um, I've given my email address. If there's any way I can help or assist in the future, uh, please do reach out to me via email. Um, and I am happy to uh, assist in any way that I can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. This presentation was beautiful and amazing and spot on. And I'm sitting here being very professional, but I'm just so excited. By your pedagogy, the way that you've taught all of the important themes about the difference between, you know, um, institutional archive and then the importance of um, community archives and it really being like, um, I, I wrote a couple of your quotes and I wish I had been on Twitter so I could have tweeted them, but maybe I'll do that afterwards. Uh, but you You're talked about- You're telling me I'm tweetable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this sort okay. of legacy, right? How it's our responsibility. I did have a few questions, but to be respectful of your time, I'll just ask one. I am uh, curious. I, 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 I'm, I'm yours, so. <laughs> um, as an archivist, can you tell us about something that you've encountered in the archives that really impacted you? Hmm. So there have been it, it's sort of it's it's hard to really quantify because it's it, it, it's almost it's almost a daily thing, but but one of the things that struck me uh, was we had done a oral history interview on the Glosson family. Okay, these were um, folks from the area who went on to college, most of them athletes, um, and. The, they did very well in sports at the, at the collegiate level in college. And they talked about an experience actually dating back to high school where they came upon a, a situation. They were on a bus. They had stopped to try and get something to eat for lunch. The bus was surrounded by bats, with men, men with bats. Uh, and, and fortunately, a person who was the owner of the establishment to where they were getting this from, who was not a person of color, uh, stepped out and, and pretty much stopped it. Okay, just, you know, not on my property, this won't happen here. So, so that, that was one. Um, and the question was asked of him, how were you able to deal with 
and tolerate that treatment. And what he shared was his parents had taught him the power of love and how that is one of the strongest forces that we have uh, to be able to combat a society perhaps that is not very friendly toward us. So that's, that was one thing that struck me. Um, so, so that was you know, an oral history interview that, that impacted me that way. Uh, so that, that's one. Um, another one is, is when you, let me see, when you find, so, so you, hear, you hear, and this is where my, my, my love for, for my appreciation for public historians came into play. We were, we were looking for some information on Project ABLE. So we, one of our exhibits right now is the, the Eugene Coleman exhibit. He was, he was a, a local a newspaper publisher who published for basically 60 years and, and kept the pulse, the beat of, of life for African-Americans in San Antonio. All right. And he, so, so being able to see his, his actual papers, the things that he wrote about, um, to be able to touch the stuff, you know, that, 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 that gives me a lot of joy. And, and as we were, it's almost like being a detective because you go to try to, you're looking for stuff. And when you actually find an answer, <laughs> there's, there's nothing like it. And if, you know, if you've been a researcher any length of time, you know what I'm talking about. It's called serendipitous discovery. And you just trip on something that is like, wow, I've been looking for that for the longest time. And now I found it. So. Those, those are just some of the, the, the great things that, that we, you know, that we get to, to, be, to be associated with as archivists. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I don't know if students had any final questions before we go, but I do want to be respectful of your time. Um, anytime y'all have access to an archivist or a librarian, like talk to them. They just know so much. <laughs> So, so I want to share a quick point, uh, since this is a research class, um, and you all probably know this, but I want to remind you, databases, databases, databases. San Antonio Public Library has them, UTSA Library has them. Utilize your databases. And know that some things, everything's not on the internet. Everything is not on the internet, okay? So there's a lot of stuff that you think doesn't exist that's not on the internet. So, so you want to, you know, think out, sometimes think outside of, of just what I can Google or what I can find on Google Scholar. There's a, so, so that's, a, that's a key that I, I'll share with you. Thank you for that. I'm gonna tweet all of those <laughs> uh, words of advice. <laughs> Uh, well, this was an amazing presentation. This was spot on on multiple levels in terms of the class content, but also in terms of social events that are happening. You shared that oral history, and I think that was uh, um, your first experience that you shared. I think that was perfect for everything that's been happening uh, in the news, I mean, for centuries, but definitely <laughs> recently. So I appreciate that. And thank you so much for uh, giving your time to share your expertise. And I will encourage the students again um, to take advantage of extra credit opportunities to go by and to visit the online exhibits, but also the physical space. 218 so South you. Pressa, 218 <laughs> South Pressa, La Vieta, SACAM.org, SACAM.org. <laughs> I shared it in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, this was amazing. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. You all have a great <laughs> evening. Take care. I want to see all A's. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. <laughs>